Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I am Gandato Gaming. I like to chew ass and talk about scary shit in video games, and I'm all out of ass to chew right now. So I guess all we have left to do is talk about scary shit in video games. I've talked a lot on the channel about creepy content in games, specifically kid-friendly games more recently, but today I wanted to take a look at creepier things that were removed from games, whether it was from them being too creepy for the games they were going to be in, or for other reasons entirely. Cut content from video games, especially your favorite video games, is like playing a fun game of what if, where the game you know so well had a chance of being very different from what you remember. It's almost like taking a look into an alternate timeline where you see Luigi actually did hang himself in the mansion. So today I want to focus on that and take a look through a few games back ends and really dig out some creepy stuff that developers thought no one would ever find. Luigi's Mansion is filled with unused content, mainly being cut changes to the main gameplay like the fact your poltergust could overheat in the original version of the game, or changes like cutting enemies like the chef portrait ghost that might have appeared in the kitchen area. These changes were probably better for the game in the end, but when it comes to what we're talking about today, I don't know if that's really the case. In the files for the game, there is a file named elh.szp, and it appears to be a cut enemy or boss character from the final Luigi's Mansion game. The file represents a character who is a giant textureless blob that takes the form of a sludge-like creature. It clearly never made it super far in development as it's a bright grayish color missing any textures to make it stand out really. Hackers have actually been able to bring this model into the game by replacing the uh, first toad you talk to in the game present in the foyer. ELH has six distinct animations of which all can be seen when he is brought into the game. Most of these movements are attacks and idle animations but some seem to suggest the boss was meant to focus on the elemental attacks Luigi has has and that he gains throughout the game like the fire, ice, and water. This is because certain animations show this ghost spawning pillars of fire along with some sort of ember sparks or some sort of elemental dust in the air. To many, the creature resembles what might be an early version of the boss Bogmire in the final game that ended up being cut after the final model was created. I could actually see this as they share pretty similar characteristics as both are gooey sludge-like monsters. When we look at the entity in this video where the player clearly hacked the ELH monster in, it appears very creepy and disturbing, as it's not only huge and intimidating, but appropriately feels pretty out of place here. Maybe it's just because there's a direct threat in the foyer, a room that before that didn't feature any enemies, besides that dastardly chandelier that is. ELH isn't even this creature's actual name, as this was what was given to it by the people who found it based on the file name ELH.SZP. Whatever this thing is, it proves that the first Luigi's Mansion could have looked a lot different than how we know it today, and that's pretty exciting to me because I love this fucking game. ELH is also commonly thought to be not a boss at all, but a souped up enemy who might have combined all the abilities, as mentioned before, of the common elemental ghost into one roided out hulk of a ghost. There's even more theories as to what he might have actually done as as an enemy. Some people say he was meant to act as maybe a Mr. X type of character or an SAX for Metroid or something, where it would slowly stalk Luigi throughout the mansion, and that's gotta be the most terrifying theory I've heard for this thing so far. To me, the mere presence of this creature in this video is enough to put me a little bit on edge, so I can't imagine if this thing had an actual boss fight and appearance in the final game. Like, what would that thing look like? Some people also say they prefer this version if it was an earlier version of Bogmire, as opposed to the final version of Bogmire we got, and I, I'm not too sure. I've grown to like the Bogmire we have now, but looking back at ELH, he does seem a little bit more intimidating, so I don't know. What do you guys think? I've talked about Bully one other time on the channel before, and it was covering a pretty disturbing soundbite you can hear in, in what seems to be a domestic violence incident happening in the nearby town that Bully takes place in. I thought for sure, right, nothing could get as disturbing as domestic violence from the game. But if we take a look at the cut content that was left in the game's back end, we can find a fate for the main character, Jimmy, that is pretty fucking grim. In a later boss fight in the game, Jimmy fights another student named Edgar, and the boss fight takes place in a factory above a large vat of acid pretty much akin to that one scene in Tim Burton's Batman where Joker takes a little tumble. Oops. Initially, the battle seems like any other standard boss battle in the game with some gimmicks here and there, but after some people started to dig into the back end of the game, they found that a large part of the boss battle was seemingly missing. This was due to things like Edgar's audio clips that were cut out, suggesting that Jimmy was meant to die by falling into the acid. Poor little Jimmy taking an acid bath. 
Edgar even teases him a little bit in these sound bites, and it, this all but confirms that this was once meant to be one of Jimmy's fates in the game. Not only this, but there is code, and if you hack the game, you can actually take Jimmy into the, like, dip him into the acid, wherein he would actually die. There wouldn't be any reason for this trigger to happen if they hadn't planned on using it before it was cut out of the game as a way to kill off Jimmy. Many believe this just to be a gruesome, disturbing way to get a game over, similar to how Michael in uh, GTA 5 had that meat grinder game over, but some players believe this was actually a cut alternate ending for the game entirely, in which canonically Jimmy ultimately meets his fate by being thrown into the acid and slowly dissolving away, all while Edgar mocks him. Jesus Christ. Here is a recreation of what this scene might have looked like by the YouTuber Deadpool XYZ, and it's a pretty faithful one if I must say. That burns, doesn't it? Bitch, bitch, bitch. Yeah, that's some pretty heavy shit right there. And like this comment said, at least Jimmy is toughing it out and not screaming in pain because that would have really made it really hard to watch. Not to say watching Edgar Maka dissolving Jimmy isn't dark enough, but it could have been a lot worse here. And since this is just a mock-up, who knows how dark this scene really would have played out had it been kept in the final game. Rockstar Games clearly aren't scared of putting more dark and real things into their games, but if this had made it into Bully and was fully featured as an alternate ending for Jimmy, where he fucking dies in acid, I think it would have uh, definitely earned a mature rating without a doubt, and maybe they wanted to avoid that. I mean, don't get me wrong, things like domestic violence is definitely dark enough in the game, but adding in the fact that one of the main characters could have met his fate like this really makes you wonder just how dark the world of Bully would be if Rockstar put everything they wanted into it. The first Half-Life saw a decent bit of cut content, whether it was enemies and characters or whole gameplay designs being omitted. One of the enemies that was cut from the game was known as Mr. Friendly, and despite his name, he is truly one of the creepiest cut characters from a game in my opinion. This thing is a large skin-first type creature that is in the shape of a pseudo-horse thing with long, dangly tentacles in its front. This thing was pretty packed with moves like a vomiting attack, most similar to the Boomer from Left 4 Dead. Interestingly, the slam attack Friendly does would have knocked the glasses off the main character, Gordon, and thus you'd have to attack this thing with blurred vision. That's f crazy. A really cool concept, but alas, they weren't able to implement it due to the limitations at the time. And uh, I gotta say, that's a that's a fat rip. That sounds like such a cool aspect and would have made this guy even more creepy than he already is. Because you wouldn't be able to see him. The creature itself in design is pretty creepy up there with the other iconic designs of the Half-Life series. But there's actually an interesting backstory of how this creature came to be. Ken Birdwell, a Valve software engineer, was looking for new designs for certain enemies and decided to ask his 12-year-old brother Ted to mock up some designs of the creatures after he had witnessed some drawings of his and was honestly pretty impressed. When Ted brought the drawings in, Ken noticed that a lot of them were sexual in nature and he was flabbergasted that Ted brought in such grotesque drawings to his place of work and in front of his boss, Gabe Newell. Turns out this type of design is exactly what Gabe was looking for. Let's go, Ted! As was stated on the Half-Life wiki, Newell and Backman then began a discussion about possible psychosexual alien behaviors and clinical descriptions of disturbed adolescent sexual fantasies. The sexual themes of some of these enemies were intended to elicit a response from the innate homophobia of 14-year-old boys, a significant portion of the target audience for the game. So yeah, if you're a 14-year-old boy who's always in my comments talking about how lazy and how shit my videos are, well guess what? Penis jump scare idiots. I do think this is pretty funny as even back then Gabe was aware of his audience and was trying to scare them to the point he'd add in phallic-like enemies like Mr. Friendly here and attempt to scare off the ignorant players of the time. Although Mr. Friendly never made it into Half-Life, I think he's still a super creepy enemy in design and no, it's not just because he's dong-shaped, okay? I got no problem with that. It's more like his mole-like qualities, such as his missing eyes and a giant mouth with large teeth protruding out of it. Overall, I think they were maybe a little too ambitious with Mr. Friendly, and if they had toned down some of the effects he had on the player, then maybe he would have ended up in the game. Regardless, though, there are still a bunch of creepy shit to find in the Half-Life universe, schlong-shaped or not.
The first Silent Hill, while not as popular as the second Silent Hill, is still an amazing horror experience that introduced the world to some of the creepiest creature designs in a horror game. The game is chock full of these disfigured creatures, but there is actually a lot of cut content from the Silent Hill series over the years, specifically when it comes to the game's monsters and enemies. Today I want to focus solely on the first game's cut content, but if I ever do a follow-up video there is some more creepy shit from later games like Homecoming that was cut, so maybe I'll do a follow-up for them because there's some pretty wacky shit in here. For now though, I want to run through some of the creepier cut monsters from the first Silent Hill all the way back in 1999. Most of the cut monsters for this game were oddly enough designed around real life animals, but throwing them through a Silent Hill filter if you will. All of the footage I'm going to use in this segment are from animation tests of the cut monsters from the channel Gyromancy, and these were based off the leak of Silent Hill's back end by the person who found those monsters, uh, Rocker666. The butterfly is a large cut monster enemy that resembles more of a moth to me, but it was deemed a butterfly in the game's back end. It is a large brown wing bug that appears to have both attack and death animations, confirming this would have been an enemy player's fight in the game. This one in particular kind of sends a chill down my spine, as I remember one night I was taking out the garbage when I was living at my parents, and it was pretty dark out, like dusk, and I was walking towards the garbage can when I just hear these, this large flapping like huge wings right above me. I never actually got visual confirmation of what it was, but I had been playing a lot of Animal Crossing at the time, and I was catching a lot of the big moths you find during the summer months in that game. So I was fully convinced I almost got murked by the world's largest moth in my backyard. Ever since then, I've been a little bit skeeved out by oversized moths and butterflies of the sort, so even seeing this low poly model squirming around makes me a little bit uneasy to be honest. Unfortunately, we didn't get the enemy in the final game as it would have been pretty impactful for anyone with fears of bugs especially oversized ones that can fly, like this guy. This chicken enemy right here is either really funny or really disturbing to you, and I can't figure out which side I stand on here. It's assumed that this enemy would have actually been a boss in the game, as it's much larger than any of the other cut monsters, and it has a lot more animations behind it. Compared to some of the other bosses in the game, a giant featherless chicken might not have been the best option in terms of creepiness, so I can see why they cut it, but I don't know, if you put me in a dark room with this giant chicken, I'm gonna be looking for the fucking door. Some of the animations for the chicken are actually pretty funny too, as it looks like he's just getting laid out in a few of these, like you just clock this guy right in the chin. Someone needs to mod this big chicken guy back in to replace Incubus as the final boss, then that'll truly be the definitive Silent Hill 1 experience. EL in the game's files is actually of a manta ray sort of creature that looks like it's a combination of your typical manta ray and maybe like a dolphin's face or something. Whatever the case is, this is a dangerous ass manta ray, alright? Not only can he sting you with his barbed tail, he can also bite the player with his newfound mouth. I'm not sure if this thing was actually going to appear in any water segments in the game or if these things would just be floating around a dark corner waiting to catch the player lacking or something. Some people online suggest there might be a cut level that house some of these creatures like a cut zoo level or something, but this is purely speculation and nothing's ever been confirmed about this. Listen, in or out of water, I don't want to be messing with this thing alright, I might just get Erwin dude. Rest in peace big man, I still haven't accepted it all these years later bro. How the f did you get got with a five f manta ray dude? The frog is one of the more visually disturbing of these cut enemies as it appears super surreal and almost grotesque in a weird way. Obviously there's no guts hanging out of this thing, but look at it. What the hell? A frog is the closest thing you could describe this thing as being, but if I ever saw a frog like this walking in the rain, I'd book it the other way as fast as I fucking could. It sucks for this guy because instead of turning into Godzilla from the radiation he was clearly exposed to, he turned into a frog without a face and bigger limbs. Sick dude, when do I get my fire breath, right? In reality though, I really don't like how this thing squirms in its animations and just the idea of this thing stalking you throughout the game creeps me the hell out. Even the way it squirms around on the ground after a I assume the player would have attacked it. It looks like a child having a temper tantrum, but instead it's a large amphibious blob. Jesus Christ, what's going on? MKY in the code is likely short for monkey, as that's the closest thing people have connected this thing to in relation to its file name anyway. The large monkey creature is oddly on four legs as it walks through its animations, making it resemble a hairless bear or wolf or something, at least to me. It's also equipped with large sharp claws on its front two legs, along with a pretty fierce snout. I'm, I haven't seen a monkey like this before. Holy shit. 
What kind of fucked up monkeys do you guys have? The animations show just how fast this thing could move too, as it seemingly could gallop towards a player, which I can only imagine is as terrifying as I'm picturing it right now. Not only that, but it has animations where it appears it would have been hit out of its running animation, assuming the player was meant to attack the creature whilst it was charging at them. Fuck that, dude. I'm not doing that. I'll wait for it to, get, to fucking catch a breath. It also has a few other idle animations and dying animations, and assuming this was just a standard creature and not a boss, I gotta say, I think it would have been really effective and impactful as a standard enemy. Could you imagine a pack of these guys rolling up on you? It would have taken the fear people had from the first Resident Evil zombie dog jump scare and upped it to a whole other level. Just imagine this thing charging at you down a dark alley at night and was clearing five blocks in ten seconds. I'm all good, dude. Monkey monkey on the bed. He jumped off and bumped his head. Good. I hope he fucking died. The ostrich is a large, fleshy, bulbous creature that only slightly resembles an ostrich in stature. It's kitted out with tall, skinny legs and bulbous, fleshy tumors making up its body. Its animation set is pretty standard for a monster like this with walking animations and even a jumping animation where it appears to be lunging towards the player. It kind of reminds me of a really dark version of another cut enemy from another game, Super Mario Sunshine, known as Hinokori, but maybe I'm just trying to ground this enemy a bit because what is actually going on in this design? I'll all I gotta say is Expresso from Donkey Kong Country has seen a bit of better days, in my opinion. The last of the notable cut enemies is the snake, and this one, similarly to the chicken and butterfly, actually resembles the real life animal somewhat. The snake is still pretty creepy and even a little uncanny, as it's kind of built. It feels like you yeah, we're gonna go make a Play-Doh snake and you didn't stretch the dough out all the way, so you just have this chode of a snake left over. I think this was done to make it more unnerving, and I think it achieves this. Usually if you want to make a snake in a game more scary, you make them larger than life, right? But they decided to compact this little guy, and the result is definitely creepy to say the least. Don't get me wrong. Its tongue is even part of the model itself, so it's always out, looking like a gross tentacle coming out of the snake's head or something. If you have a fear of snakes, then I don't need to say anymore, right? This guy would have been creepy as hell in the game. Overall, I can definitely see why these were cut to make room for the other enemies in the game, as these were probably Probably the most tame in terms of creepy designs, but still looking at them outside of the context of the game, they're definitely creepy as fuck. There's just a certain style with all these Silent Hill enemies you have, and they're unmatched in my opinion, at least for back then. Souls games are kind of like Silent Hill in a way, in terms of enemy design, where they have very unique enemy designs that make you feel like you're playing a Souls game or a Silent Hill game, you know? These games are kind of easy hitters to find creepy content that didn't make it into the final game because, you know, the surrounding game is also f***ed up. In Dark Souls 3, there are a few boss battles that are optional, and you can choose to go up against the boss known as Osiris if you want to achieve the End of Fire ending, but if you're just casually playing through the game, Osiris is considered one of the optional bosses in the game. So chances are you might not even run into this guy if you're kind of just mainlining the game. And honestly, after hearing about his story, you might want to just avoid him altogether. Osiris is one of the most vocal bosses in the game, often speaking about his blindness or of his son Ocelot. Ocelot is presumably invisible throughout the fight and is being cradled by Osiris all while fighting the player. Hey, I would have put the kid down if I were him, but who knows, he might just be crazy and Ocelot isn't even in his arms in the first place. Throughout the battle, you'll hear a baby crying in the background and Osiris constantly asking Ocelot to reveal himself, so perhaps he's actually there, but just literally invisible. Halfway through the battle, Osiris realizes he's not getting anywhere with the dead weight of invisible ocelot and does this Yeah, dad of the year goes to this Osiris guy without a doubt. Holy shit. Listen, if my dad had just chucked me at the ground full full force when I was 2, I'd make sure to bring him a number 1 dad mug from the afterlife. For sure, dude. Yeah, this is pretty dark, especially if you consider that there's a chance Ocelot was actually there in his hands and just invisible and met this grisly demise. Jesus, I'd rather be the dude whose dad ate him. For a while, it was speculated that a disturbing piece of audio was cut from this segment as well, but according to the user Thard on Reddit, it can still be heard in the game, just unlikely that a lot of people heard it during their playthroughs. I'll play the audio right here, and I must warn it's pretty disturbing, so be warned about that. And so it seemed the audio clip was cut from the final game due to, well, it's pretty obvious, 
I mean, that's just messed up. But OP went on to explain, A lot of people have theorized that all the squishing sounds weren't intended to be played with the rest of it in the game. Rather, it was simply stored in the same sound file for convenience, and when data miners found the file, they assumed it was meant to be played all at once, so you get the disturbing sound bite you have. I'm relatively sure only the initial blood-curdling cry of terror and the first crunch play in the game. He then explains that during the halfway segment where Osiris smashes Ocelot into the ground, that there is actually an empty dialog box that blocks the next audio segment that would play this audio, as most players are either concentrated on dodging the boss or watching this third degree murder take place in front of their eyes, and thus they're not clicking through the dialog boxes in order to hear it in time. I'm also unsure if this Reddit user's claims have been backed up, as there was no video, just the text, and I'm not going to painstakingly make my way to Osiris and Dark Souls 3 to fact check the guys, but it seems to check out for me. Maybe if anyone has tested this themselves, you can leave it in the comments and let us know. Listen, cut content or not, the baby crying followed by the large squishing sound is enough to devastate anyone listening to it. It'll ruin your damn day. This isn't even the true cut part either, as in alpha versions of the game, the boss battle can be seen in its original form, with Ocelot being present in Osiris' hands. No. <laughs> The model is of a sickly looking infant who is clearly not doing super great here. Or he's just sleeping or something, you know, let's stay positive here. So it appeared that they simply made this boss battle a little bit too, a little bit too dark, I'll say that. With the audio and visual confirmation that Osiris just crushes his own son in an attempt to win the fight. So then they decided at the last minute to go in and remove the model of Ocelot and try to retcon the decision of making Osiris call out to Ocelot to reveal himself throughout the fight i.e. he's invisible in his hands. So it censors it a little bit, but therefore he's still technically in his hand, and it's still just as fucked up, we just can't see it in full detail. I assume not a lot of ideas are shot down for being too disturbing for these games, because look at them, I mean, some of the backstories and side quests are super fucked up in their own right. So this is just proof as to how fucked up this cut moment from Dark Souls 3 was. I mean, we didn't need proof, but holy shit. The Danganronpa games are creepy and unnerving in their own ways. You really have to envelop and invest yourself in the story to get these feelings, but these games will have you on the edge of your seat, if nothing else. The first game is great at introducing the world while keeping it contained inside of school environment. It, it, it all feels very claustrophobic, I'll say. If you're a fan of the Phoenix Wright games and you haven't played Danganronpa, it's more like a dark take on those games with more supernatural elements. Arguably the most iconic thing from these games is the cute demonic teddy bear known as Monokuma. He acts similarly to Jigsaw in the Saw movies, not directly being the main villain but being controlled by them, acting as sort of a puppet for the overall mastermind's plans to execute. Originally the design of Mon Monokuma could have been much different from what we know today. While he's not the creepiest thing ever in his teddy bear form, there are certain scenes where he comes off as creepy, especially when he's carrying out these executions on the characters in the game. Now just imagine that instead of a fluffy cute teddy bear, instead he was a human character that was cut down the middle Two-Face style and revealing half his body as fleshy organs and tissue. The closest thing this could relate to is those science classroom diagrams of the human body, where half is skinned up and the other half is revealing the inside of the human body. All fine for a high school science classroom, right? But in the context of Danganronpa, this design would have been too much, man. Too much. You went too far. The game is already shrouded in darkness and death, and if this guy was carrying all of this out, I don't know, it would be much more of a horror game in my eyes than. I'm unsure if this design just didn't fit their needs for the character of Monokuma, or if it was actually re just removed for being too disturbing. Regardless, I share the idea of many Danganronpa fans and the fact that we got lucky to get the cute bear design in the final game and not this fucked up wannabe human guy. I hate how gleeful he looks too, man. Like, buddy, half your body is gone. I guess you could say, he's alright now. <laughs> I've talked about the creepy pre-release content for Epic Mickey before on the channel in which concept art reveals that the game in its original state was going to be a much darker experience. Or at least that's what you would glean from the concept art looking at them. But in reality it was made in order to shock the Disney executives who would greenlight the game so much so the more tame concepts they actually wanted to implement in the game wouldn't be seen as, as dark as the shock content they initially showed through their concept pieces. It really does make me want a horror themed Mickey Mouse game where they play around with more ideas from these concept images, making a true M for mature horror Mickey Mouse experience. 
Even though the developers didn't want to make the game as dark as the concept art portrayed, they still had some scrapped ideas that would have made for an interesting and pretty unnerving time in my opinion. A concept the developers were playing with early on in the development of Epic Mickey was a good and evil system we can see in games like Infamous or Red Dead's Honor System. In the game, Mickey has the choice of using paint thinner on enemies throughout his adventure, and this is a pretty powerful attack as most of the enemies are made up of paint, so when, when you really break it down, the paint thinner probably acts like an acid attack in this world, so Mickey is just going around acid attacking everyone, which is pretty dark in its own right. But the developers kind of backed this up by the fact if you use too much paint thinner throughout your adventure, that Mickey Mouse himself would start to melt away from the overexposure to the thinner, revealing a much creepier version of Mickey Mouse. This version shows melted paint sloughing off of Mickey, which can pretty much be considered his skin at this point, revealing a demonic version of Mickey underneath, i.e. the evil Mickey you had been building this entire game. Listen, that's pretty messed up, but it would also have been a really cool to see a consequence system like this present in Epic Mickey. It would have definitely made some players second guess using paint thinner as much throughout their adventure to dodge the demonic Mickey model, who in concept art is scary enough, but in the actual game would have been pretty interesting to see what he would have looked like. The idea of Mickey being dissolved himself by the thinner was a scrap for a more tame evil Mickey known as Scrapper Mickey, but ultimately this whole idea was unfounded and thus the whole concept was cut from the game, ultimately. If they ever made a third game in the series, I'd love to see them take a darker tone overall and try out some of these really unique concepts again, but I can see why they were pretty wary of it in the first place. It is Disney we're talking about here. Plus, it's Mickey Mouse, their golden child. That'd be like if Nintendo made third degree burn Mario if you used too many fire flowers or something. It would have been too much for a kid's game, but damn if this isn't a really cool idea. Well, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. Uh, thanks for getting us past 20k subs. I think we're right past 22 right now, which is fucking crazy. That's insane, and it's still going up, so please, if you would consider subscribing if you liked the video, it'd mean a lot to your boy. Uh, if you'd like to see another part of this, let me know in the comments as well, or simply like the video, and that'll let me know as well. Thanks for all the support recently, and look forward to some more cool content coming in the future. Thanks for watching. Peace.